fastball tapped at the plate. It'll trickle down the third baseline. The Mariners are going to let it roll, 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 roll. Lenny Randall gets down on his hands and knees and blows on it like a curler, and it goes foul. Randall puts on quite a show, and here comes Jim Fry out, and he's going to protest with home plate umpire Larry McCoy that Randall cannot get down and influence the direction of the baseball. I have never seen that before in baseball. If this is allowed, Kenny, that will be part of the arsenal, I'm sure, of the third baseman from now on, especially on AstroTurf. Zach is back. It's the Zach Geld Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. What a moment that was. Lenny Randall blowing the baseball to go foul down the third baseline. This is the Zach Gelb Show on a football Friday. We'll do a little baseball talk as we're putting the finishing touches on the 2016 baseball season. Cubs World Series champions and Lenny Randall actually spent one year in Chicago and he joins us right now actually calling in from Italy. Lenny, how are you, my friend? Bella, bella, bella vita, Italia, Jersey. I got Jersey boys out here in Italy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're calling us from Italy. There's always something fun when a guest calls us from some bizarre place. And I love Italy because I am Italian. So it's so cool to talk to you. Tell me your favorite part about living in Italy. Eh, eh, bella vita, different la gente, va mangiare bene alla mare. Eh, <laughs> uh, you want me to tell you in French, Italian, German, or I'm, I'm sorry, or Jersey? Well, I am Italian, but uh, I can't oh. speak Italian, so give it to me in English. I, I'll go uh, mezzo mezzo, we say mezzo mezzo, like 50-50. <laughs> in other words, it's kind of like being on Jersey Shore without Snooky, okay? <laughs> it's, okay, it's like uh, being with... Um, you know, Robert Riley, Lucho Dalla, and Bruce Springsteen in Rome at the cathedral for uh, Born in the USA concert in Italian. You, got, you, feel, you feel me on that? Oh, you're speaking my language. I love the boss. The boss was out here and just blew everybody away. I had a group that came from Cabrini College, Joe Cannoli. Okay, his name is Joe Cannoli. He's a pitcher at Cabrini <laughs> College. We trained him in the Piazza di Popolo and the Fontana di Trevi. His coach is a new coach at Cabrini College. And he learned to pitch like DiMaggio was pitching to him. Okay, just fo follow me now. Okay. Because this is a lot. I got a Tug McGraw kind of pitcher. He's a lefty. His ball sinks like Tommy John. Wow. And he has the attitude of a Randy Jones. Hmm. Okay? That's unbelievable. Now, picture, a little, picture a little Tug McGraw, little Tommy, Tommy John, <laughs> a little Randy Jones. And he went from 88 miles an hour after five course meal of pasta to 94 miles an hour fastball. Wow. How do you know if one of these young players have what it takes? Well, it, it's interesting to see the mental state. Just a lot, 80 percent. Ted Williams, my manager, used to tell me and Tori that it's 80 to 90 percent mental. I don't care if it's hitting or pitching. A pitcher can really dominate a game for five or six innings. It doesn't have to be nine anymore, like Rivera does. It, you know, uh, like uh, you know, you saw the way Cleveland used the whole country to pitch for them. So when you see a re, a, a pitcher that has a good fastball and has a lot of movement on it, and you go, wow, and he's a lefty, automatic a lefty is five hundred thousand dollars just to have a conversation with me. That's what you're going to get because you can't find them. You can't find them. You know, you, you, every time you get a lefty, I mean, you right now, who do you want, Michael Vick, or do you want? Fitzgerald, I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when, when you, you have, have these type lefty. of players, though, uh, let me just ask you this, though, because when you have these types of players, and, and it's just a culture, oh, uh, you know, they're, they're in Italy, but what kind of players can they be? Uh, why are the players there so good, and why are you so dedicated to this stuff? Well, the, re the reason is I had all my managers were in the war. All my managers fought in, in Anzio. My coach and my dad and uncles and friends fought in Anzio. And they kept telling me between seventh grade to, to senior year in high school, and my principal, Lawrence Freeman, bless his soul, they were military guys. They were in the Army in Anzio. And they got Hitler. So they lived in Anzio. They live in Latina. They told me about Mussolini. They told me about the whole Mediterranean. I'm a history guy. I'm a nut, political science major. So I used to study that. And in the off season, in the Olympic team, I would go and visit Ribeiro Bessalemani or Germany, or I'd go visit Japan. I was a tour guy. I always wanted to see 31 countries. That was my goal in life. And baseball was providing me that opportunity when DiMaggio came to me and Frank Sinatra and said, bro, from Patello Mio, 
I'm going to go to Italy with him, Verona. I went, what? I'm with Danny Gambino. He's our second base. And I'm going, what? He's written the whole fifth floor. I go, now how much dedication do we get when we have Nellie Fox telling me to go over there, DiMaggio's telling me to go over there, and now they want to go over with me. And I'm like, okay, Fergie Jenkins, you want to go? Yes, you do. Uh, I took 15 guys over, Greg Nettles, and they didn't want to come back. Kenny Landrell, Ron yeah. Floor, they all lost their passports. So they saved America. So I said, look, I can do what I, what I can to get your kids' skills up to our level, to the major league level, double-A, triple-A. But my goal was college level. If I can get – right now in America, we're doing 375,000 kids. If I can get 375,000 kids in Italy come over like Calabello, who I played with, like Rick Waits, who came over with me after he left the Mariners and came over. I got guys like Bob Glasso to leave America and come over and play the end of their careers. It is a phenomenal experience. Can you imagine Zach Zachito? <laughs> I like that. Picture a little Zach doing radio like Harry Carey in Italy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm actually picture, distracted. Picture going to Milan and playing ball yeah. in Milan for two or three days a week. That's it. And then you go to the Piazza de Pablo Roma, you go visit the Pope. Give me a break already. Now, I actually did a school trip back when I was in high school uh, five or six years ago. I went to Italy, and they took us there, and it was just unbelievable. And we were there for, I think it was 10 or 11 days, and I could have spent – you know, months there. It's just so yeah. addicted, yeah. That, that culture, and it's just so cool. But you, you honestly, you got me distracted because you mentioned that big bowl of pasta earlier. <laughs> just describe me the food in Italy because I miss it, my friend. Well, you you got to know, we have five-course meals every day. Mm. And at 12 o'clock, my sister's buying a $3,000 worth of Gucci, right? Mm. So Gucci goes, look, no, dopamine job is every week. I'm not in a hurry to get your money. She threw up her head like, what the? I mean, if it was in if it was Macy's in, in Bloomingdale's in Sack Fifth or Jersey, come on. <laughs> they would have said, okay, let's give her a lunch with this, <laughs> with this outfit. But over there, food is a religion. Eating is a sport. It's like you take four to five hours to eat, two hours. There's no fast food drive through like, what do you got, Burger King, Taco Bell? Garbage. Whatever. That stuff's you garbage. Know, it's not happening, okay? You get a panini, you'll have tagliatelle, piscatori, risotto, uh, le pesce. And, and then you, that's a warm-up. <laughs> it's like you're warming up to eat. Uh, how many people get to warm up to eat? Not <laughs> most. Well, actually, in America, now, now it's like competitive eating, so you never know. <laughs> so there, there is no drive-by food, drive-by eating, drive-through food. It's just, okay, we're going to sit down and have. Look, Zach, Zachito, can you imagine eating 105 different types of pizza? Is that a sport? You know, I'd be in the ground, honestly. I wouldn't survive. I'm talking anchovies. I'm talking uh, everything in the sea. Octopus, shrimp, everything in the sea mm. is on the pizza. Okay? And it and a little flavor twist with 17 different cheeses. Talk to me, Jesus. I mean, and you don't get fat. It's amazing. You, know, you walk it off. Yeah, you walk it off. That's because of the cobblestone, and, honestly, and, uh, in Italy. Midnight. It's that, awesome. It's a that, bella vita. Yeah, that cobblestone in Italy gets a good workout on the uh, thighs and everything. Lenny Randall with us right now on the Zach Gelb Show. So you played uh, in Chicago for a year. And I know there's a time difference, but you were telling me you were up and you were watching the whole thing. Uh, what did it mean to you to see the Cubs finally win the World Series? Well, it, it, my Facebook blew up in Sicily because I, I sent a pillow. There's a team in, uh, in uh, Sicily that we sponsor and a team in Sardinia that we sponsor and there's a team in Algary. So the, the whole – Time zone is we, – we don't look at a clock. <laughs> the only clock you look at in Italy is between 12 and 5 to eat. That's it. You don't look <laughs> – don't, nothing else matters. And then Sunday at Vatican, you're going to go to Pope at 1 or 2, at the early bird, 10 o'clock. That's, a, that's about it on the clock thing. Everything is domani. If you got a cab coming to pick you, up, pick you up at the Grand Hotel or Best Western, and he says he's coming at 5, he'll be there at 6. It's okay. OK, so we don't look at a clock. We look at mainstream. We let live TV. We watch the British Channel. We watch MTV. We know about Sarday coming to Germany before Sarday goes to Italy or goes to Rome or goes to Jersey. I mean, we're, they're ahead of a lot of things that Americans are just kind of catching on to, not just to mention the Maserati and the Alfa Romero and a lot of other things. But there's a love for American life and American players and American people, and, and they appreciate us coming there and helping their country because that's what we did. We went in there and saved Italy. So when our players come and try to train their kids, 
I mean, if we, if we get 17 or one, two Piazzas and a couple of Calabellos and a couple of, uh, you know, Gorillis, you know, Joe Madden's going, Lenny, me and Rizzo are coming. Don't tell anybody. 30 days, we're going to live in a van. <laughs> well, hopefully just uh, when you bring those players over, Madden, if they're ever coaching him on the big league level, he's not taking them out too early like he did to Hendricks or overusing Chapman. Uh, what was going on with the manager there, Lenny? Matt, Madden is a – okay, I had him as a coach with his I angels. Like him. And he's, a, he's, off, he's out of the box. If you start doing stuff out of the box, like even uh, uh, Tito's dad, Francona's dad was out of the box when he played with Cleveland. And his son, you know, Tony, he's out of the box. And it's okay to do stuff that, okay, why not have a pitcher hit seventh and eighth if he can really hit? Okay, who does it? Boch, Bochi. <laughs> Is Bochi weird? He's been playing for 20 years or 40 years. He's going like, shoot, I'm going to put him in there in the seventh spot, and he's going to hit a home run. I mean, if you've got a pitcher that can hit, why not keep training the kids to hit? Because they're going to hit National League or, or Little League or whatever, a Pony League, college. Why not? What, you know, it was really strange, Zachito, is they're not swinging the bat anymore. They're not 12 years old and 15, I'm a specialist. Oh, you're 15 and you're what? I'm going to go three and he's have a Coke like Mariano. And what are you getting for it? A Pepsi. He got three million. Okay, there's a big difference. You got to learn to hit, feel, play two or three positions today, like Sean Green did with the Mets. He played right field. He could pitch, get two or three hitters out, and go back to left field or center field or whatever and play first base. Why be one dimensional? Can you hear me? Yeah, no, I hear oh. you. Let me let me ask you this um, too, because you played in Chicago, and we yeah. hear it from New Jersey, New York, Philadelphia, where our listening audience is. How long they've had to wait? The 108 years. How passionate those fans are. We're seeing it today with the pictures of the parade. I know you only played there for one year. Can you just describe the energy and the passion that fan base has as a player that was able to live through it? Okay, Zachito, Zach, look, listen to me, folks. Yeah. I posted my Chicago Cup Getty picture up and a couple other cards with Buckner and Kingman. Mm -hmm. And these are some great guys, great friends and whatever. And all of a sudden, 500,000 people are going, wow. send me a picture, send me a call, how are you doing? I want to come to Italy. I want to, I want to hang with you. When are you coming to Chicago? Dan Epstein, Rolling Stone Magazine. I want to do a story. I want to fly over. I want to have a honeymoon there. I'm like, <laughs> where, where were you when I was half dead in, in AAA? You know? <laughs> when you're riding no, around I'm joking, those buses. But I'm saying, the, the Chicago fan base is, okay, if you really hear me now, we used to have only one o'clock games. And the, and the fans, would, we'd have a 10 o'clock show up to the field. So if we showed up to the field at 10 o'clock and we saw, I'm not making this up, Zach, I'm not making this up. We saw 20,000 people in line before we even got out of bed. No way. Know. Really? Dude, dude, when Buckner wow. and Kingman, and so, we were rolling. Okay, we, we had drama, we had fights, we had butt, we had stealing, we had beer, we had Bellucci, we had we had Murray, and we had baseball, and very, very good to meet Chico Escuela, Jose Cardinal. We had Manny Trio. I mean, it was buzzing. We had Ernie Banks doing the national anthem in three languages. It was buzzing. It was fun. The fans knew before the game we gave away balls in, in right center field or in center field of bleacher bumps. Bleacher bums I mention anymore. I don't know why, but they had etiquette. Even though people said they didn't have class, but they had etiquette. Every now and then they have a guitar player out there. This is pregame, okay? So pregame, we going, we will rock you, you know, Bon Jovi, okay? I, we saw people in the stands who weren't normal get married and left center field. So things that we saw, we were like a family. We played hard. We get, we get, everybody left the field dirty. Ask Buckner. Ask Kingman. Okay, ask Ivan de Jesus. We played hard. We may have missed a pitcher or two, or we made one home run away, but we were always in every game, win or lose. We left it on the field because when we came out of the stadium, we knew we'd either get mugged like they do in the Bronx and Jersey. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, I don't uh, know what you're talking no, about. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but we knew that we had to play hard or the fans would disrespect you when you came out to go get your car. So now because get if you – yeah. Now, now get into more important things, though, real quickly, yeah. just because you're in Italy. And once again, I have to get back to the food because you distracted me. And I'm still thinking oh. about that bowl of pasta. J just real quickly. Oh my God. All right. You played in Chicago and New York. Settle this debate mm -hmm. for me. Who has the better pizza, Chicago and New York? You kidding me? You kidding me? I'm, I'm being dead Are serious. You kidding me? Oh, my God. If I told you 
It's a tie. Would you get mad? Um, well, I never had but, Chicago pizza. I've only had New York pizza, and I think it's great. Okay. I've been to Mama Leone's, Regine's. I've been to all the spots in New York. I even went to uh, Howard Beach. At, uh, you know where I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Me and Piazza's hang out, and uh, guy Jimmy Russo, we, we go out there. there. There's a pizza place out there that's phenomenal. Now, not the whole city now. There are just certain spots that have great pizza in, in New York, you know, certain spots. In Chicago, it's like a religion to have the best pizza in the world on the planet. And, I, and I, now if I go in a little Italy, I'm getting everything I'm getting over here in Rome and Italy, Sicilia, Sicily, and Sardinia, Bronte, Messina, Catania. I'm getting the same kind of thing in little Italy, but not in the outskirts of the suburbs. See, Americans don't know the difference as tourists when you go to, uh, let's say, 54th and, you know, I don't know, Queens, to get a pizza in Queens or, or little little. I slip. Farmington, Farmingdale. Farmingdale, yeah. <laughs> pizza, there's a different pizza sauce. And I'm not knocking any of those places, but it's not It's not a two-hour song, and wow. a guy throwing it on the ceiling, and he's catching it, and he's taking two hours to fix it, and you're going, man, I'm waiting to watch. It's a show to eat a pizza in some of those spots. And then when you finally get it in your mouth, you're like, I'll take another one. You, you, you're rolling out. You're not walking out. You roll out. I don't, I don't, I'm a two-slice guy, and I'm done. I know guys that do a whole pizza by themselves. They'll walk in and order by themselves. And you go, and, and you, we're done, right? No, that's just my order. <laughs> you, you go order a, a margarita if you want it on your pizza or a pomodoro, con fungi, you know, with uh, uh, mushrooms or whatever. Uh, now, I can't eat mushrooms. Elk. I'm allergic. But, but I am the two-slice kind of guy. My mom used to chastise me if I was a kid if I had more than two slices. That was her rule, only two slices. But, but Zach, you have to eat the two slices together at the same time. You can't oh, separate yeah. them. No, you no, got no, it no, like no. a sandwich. No, well, you no, like no, a pizza no, sandwich. No, no, no. <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah, you, 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 you eat them in the same setting. You don't put them on as a sandwich. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to mix up the flavors. You got to mix up the flavors. <laughs> Before we let you run, as Lenny Randall joins us right now, and I don't know where else this conversation is going to go. That's why they call you the most interesting person to ever play the game of baseball. i just going to give you a few names or uh, a few uh, topics, and I just want to get, like, quick 30-second thoughts from you about that. Okay. So uh, let's start with Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza came over to Italy already. We had a great time. We just played golf in, outside of Chicago as well. Great guy, a lot of fun, great sense of humor. He's trying to learn Italian now, and he's trying to do some fundraiser to help the league over here as well. Super guy. I wish he would learn more Italian, though. Ted Williams. <laughs> Ted Williams is a uh, mentor, godfather, soldier. He was the one who made me say, if you don't go to Italy, I'm going to shoot you. And I'm like, okay, because he's a pilot. <laughs> Well, I, he took, I took him serious. He was a vet. I mean, he's a war hero. He's a dad. He was great. Great hitter. I listened to everything he said, and if he said, go, I went. He was one of the greatest persons off the field, not just on the field. We used to go fishing, marlin, hunting. The guy was phenomenal. I mean, not just the manager, but the total person, total package. No ego. Misunderstood Joe, guy. Joe Torrey. Joe Torrey is like a mentor, roommate, first major league coach for me in the National League with the Mets. He says, look, here's a glove. Talk to Seaver. He's going to give you a cup, and everything he hits down here, the cup can handle it if you can't pick it. I'm going, what? I didn't know what he meant by that. He meant that now that I join the team, he's going to start pitching to people inside so I could pick everything at third base and wouldn't have to wear out uh, Flynn and, and Harrelson. <laughs> Was Seaver a good guy? Was Seaver a good guy, good teammate? Seaver was awesome. He was a people person, 24-7, the same way in college as he was in, in, in Major League with the Mets and as well as Cincinnati. Went to his his uh, vineyard. He has a vineyard out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, in and, San and Francisco, same, right? Same way. I, I, usually, I'm, I'm old school. I buy a bottle of wine just to keep him happy, mm-hmm. and then we talk. I don't, I'm not up there to use him. <laughs> <Like some people. laughs> well, that's because you're in Italy, and they have the best wine ever. Come on. Oh, my God. Napa? Are you kidding me? It's second to, to, to here. All right, I got two more names for you. How about Frank mm-hmm. Lucchese? Frank Lucchese's son just sent me. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks for the scholarship. I appreciate your service. Uh, let, let's be buddies. And uh, I'll send you the email. It's like, uh, let bygones be bygones. A guy, uh, he had some mistakes in his life, and we forgive and forget. And uh, we moved on. I pray for him and his family. And I pray that uh, anybody like that, that learns from anything that they read about these stories, because it's a book now Mm -hmm. called Beyond the Big Leagues, and that's mentioned in the story with Jackie and Jesse Jackson and Bowie Coon. They're all in the story, and Billy Martin. 
And these are people that were great mentors that knew my character and know that I was attacked. <laughs> And final one for you, and you can maybe go a minute on this because I don't think we can hold it to 30 seconds. How about Lenny Randall? Lenny Randall, baseball been very, very good to me. Arizona State been very, very good to me. Football, Frank Cush, Pennsylvania been very good to me. I'm going to leave tickets at my grave site and an ATM for everybody when I leave. <laughs> I know you, you're so interesting. I, like, I don't even know how you even think of those kinds of ideas. That's amazing. Well, I'm a people person, and I've, I've been blessed financially and spiritually and morally, so I try to pass my blessings on. If I need to get Zach two tickets to go to see Bon Jovi or uh, Justin Timberlake at a concert with Jay-Z and Hillary Clinton, then I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice to have your credit card, Lenny. <laughs> well, it, I, hey, listen, uh, I'm coming out to Abrini College to do a speaking engagement. You know what that is. If not, you can look it up. And I'll have Joe call you. He's one of our, our sponsors. I'm trying to help that D1, D2 school get kids, more kids scholarships from Europe to come into America to play ball and trying to get all the New Jersey guys to come over to Italy and play ball, the International Student Exchange, because it opens up communication and, and a vehicle to make the world a better place. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Well, Lenny, uh, this was a whole lot of fun. I did learn a lot uh, in this conversation, and you keep on making me think about that food. So I'm actually going to have to take a quick break right now, but I appreciate the time, my friend, and enjoy the rest of your night. And I'm sure since you don't keep track of that time, I don't know when you're going to sleep, but have a good night whenever that is. I'm going to give you a spot to go put it on me, and I'll pick up the tab. Risotto Piscatori. Okay, sounds good. Okay. You got it. Thanks so much, Lenny. Ciao, ciao.